Robert Sapolsky knew from a young age that a career in biology was for him. His father was an architect, and yet Sapolsky had found this field to be unbearably monotonous. However, he was easily captivated by the exhibits and museums involving animals. Specifically, the New York Times stated in an interview with Sir Sapolsky that whenever he visited the Museum of Natural History in Manhattan, he spent hours fantasizing about living in the African dioramas. Ever since, he had an affinity for learning more about nature and life and the mechanisms behind them. This led him to graduate with a degree in biological anthropology from Harvard University, and later obtain a PhD in neuroendocrinology from the Rockefeller University in New York. Robert often traveled to many exotic locations to do research on certain ecological systems. He eventually landed a job at the Institute of Primate Research operated by National Museums of Kenya and Nairobi. Later, he was able to conduct his own research, where he was able to make groundbreaking discoveries. While his career was remarkable, he has definitely had to overcome some hardships, such as the death of his father, the defunding of one of his labs, and his wife's loss of a pregnancy. Despite that, he has shown resilience and is still a leader in the field today. As briefly mentioned, Sapolsky spends a lot of time doing field work with animals. He loves being in the wild and taking a break from all the hustle and bustle of a normal research lab. Amongst his love for nature's beauty is his love for his wife Lisa and two children, Benjamin and Rachel. Besides his amazing beard, Sapolsky approaches the field of biology with an interdisciplinary lens, which I love. He is aware of the left and right world we now live in and aims to bring more attention to the complexities of life by doing research as both a neurobiologist and a primatologist. Not only that, but he shows genuine passion for the work he does. For example, by spending decades getting to know one troop of baboons and getting a longitudinal understanding and appreciation of their behaviors and biological variances. He will also live in the Maasai Mara Reserve in Kenya for weeks at a time to conduct quality research. He also works in a field that relates significantly with my future career goals. I have interest in both psychology and biology realms. Understanding the mechanisms that cause mental distress in humans, specifically the neurochemical and neurophysiological sense, is an interest both Sapolsky and I have in common. Lastly, Sapolsky's findings in, have enhanced my perspective on stress specifically academic stress, and has, in some ways, helped me to better manage it. But more on that later. Robert Sapolsky is best known for his discoveries in the field of neuroscience and neurobiology. He is especially concerned with the mechanisms behind stress, such as the situations that increase or decrease the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, or in other terms, the hormones involved in stress response. He has also been a big contributor in the way stress affects the body, understanding the mechanisms behind stress-induced health effects such as ulcers and hypertension, and how stress can be caused by our social status and interactions. Lastly, he is interested in getting a deeper understanding for how the brain works, specifically in the death and creation of neurons, and how hormone levels impact the body as a whole. Sapolsky's most recent study, titled Pro-Inflammatory Primates, discusses the social hierarchies in rhesus monkeys and how that has an effect on the monkey's health. Sapolsky states that because those at the bottom work harder for their calories, have less access to social support, and are more subject to displacement aggression from dominant individuals, that lower status monkeys are more susceptible to stress-induced health effects. To test this, Sapolsky set up a lab where rhesus monkey behavior could be observed and medical testing on hormone levels, blood pressure, and immune responses such as white blood cell counts could be recorded with minimal compounding factors. He also did testing on the expression of genes relevant to lymphocyte proliferation, innate immune responses, and cytokine responsiveness. In the pro-inflammatory primate study, Sapolsky indeed found that more subordinate rhesus monkeys showed, quote, elevated concentrations of glucocorticoids or the adrenal steroids secreted during stressful situations, increased rates of hypertension, cardiovascular disease, reproductive dysfunction, and elevated pro-inflammatory responses. Sapolsky also has related to this study to social hierarchies set forth by humans and found similar patterns. To summarize the meaning of his work, he quotes, We humans activate the stress response for reasons of psychological factors, and that's simply not what the system evolved for. If you do that chronically, you're going to get sick. 
This is why his work has been extremely influential in my attempts to reduce stress, especially about menial things, because ultimately stress can shorten the already short amount of time you have. And with that, I hope you have also been inspired by the great work of Robert Sapolsky.